Hi, my name is Carter with First Updates Now. Today I'm here with 3655, the tractor technicians. Today we're going to look through this beautifully packaged robot, this super unique intake. I absolutely love it. The transfer system, the fancy uh, pivot on their shooter, and their super simple but at the same time complex climbing system. At this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Raquel, can we look through a little bit about the strategy you guys talked about at the beginning of the season, why you decided to go with this specific design, um, and you know what you wanted to do in the matches? Yeah, so at first we, we really had some key ideas. So we wanted to stay really low to the ground because the chain only hangs roughly two feet off of the ground. So we kind of wanted to hook from, like we wanted, we wanted the robot to kind of hook onto it. And so in addition, we also kind of wanted to keep the robot as light as we could roughly. So we could move with, um, you know, speed and precision. And then we wanted to reduce the amount of time that it took us to make a shot and score. Awesome, I love it. Very important things to keep in mind when building a robot. Uh, Matthew, could you take us through a little bit about your drivetrain? Yeah, so uh, we're using MK4Is uh, running L3s and Krakens on 16 tooth pinions from SDS. And uh, it's mounted to a chassis that we co-developed with NerdSpark 9312. And um, really the whole point of this was to keep packaging tight and to also keep us as light and fast as possible when moving around. All right. And can we get a little bit into this super unique intake system? Like I said, I can't get enough of watching it. So the intake system, we call it the bank drawer. Um, and so the premise behind it is we use a custom one by two aluminum slider um, that's pushed by a solenoid in the back and it moves uh, an aluminum bracket out that has bearing races on it to move our intake over the bumper after we've extended past the frame perimeter. Awesome, I love it. Can we see a demonstration of that actually? Do we have a note we could toss in? And part of it is there's also an automatic sensor inside of it that retracts it as soon as we have a note so we don't have to worry about human reaction time. Awesome. And then can you tell me a little bit about this transfer system? So the transfer system here, we kind of wanted to just keep it as close to the shooter as possible. So um, what we have is we have a few wheels in the center of the intake running straight to um, uh, straight to an axle driven by one motor and ran off gears reversing each other. And it has grip tape and green compliant wheels on it to make sure we grab the note as quickly as possible and we don't have to worry about jamming. Awesome, I love it. Now can we get back to the battery thing that you were talking to me about a little bit before this? Um, yeah. Yeah, so this year we actually decided that we wanted to kind of revamp our battery system so we've created these new parts that will securely hold the battery in place. And so we can remove a plate on the bottom of the robot here. And we can push the battery into place. It'll plug in on itself. And then we can lock it in. And it'll be tightly secure for the entire match. Awesome. And then can we move on to the um, shooter mechanism? Talk to me a little bit about this rack and pinion system. Why you decided to do that rather than just chain and sprocket or gears and things like that. Why you decided to make it out of 3D printed material rather than aluminum. So we went in with a 3D printed gears because we could get this herringbone system with the 3D printed gears. Um, 
that allow the gears to self-center themselves. So even if we were to theoretically lose this capture right here, the uh, the sun gear or planetary gear would still stay on the rack um, because these gears vector the wheel inwards towards the center and keep it aligned at all times. Awesome. And was that a full season decision, or did you change through any different iterations of your pivot? Uh, no, the pivot was the pivot was mostly complete pretty early on. Uh, we were inspired by uh, Strike Zone and their uh, pivot from 2023 uh, in designing this one. Although ours is much larger than theirs ended up being. Okay. And can you tell me a little bit more about the shooter itself? So we ended up settling on a compression of about one point one and a half inches total in here. Um, and we were inspired by the Grasshopper's horizontal shooter because we saw that and it was very, very accurate. But we wanted to put spin on the notes without such a complex uh, mixture of wheels. So we realized that if we just took the wheels and shifted them to one side of the shooter, uh, that we were getting a really accurate shot with a lot of spin, uh, helping it get that gyro effect in the air. And then also shifting them to one side allowed us to put the vortexes uh, in this little pocket right here and really clean up the packaging of the intake a lot. And we have this climber system that actually we have not talked about yet. Would you mind going over that? Yeah, so we realized that the climber uh, was not strong enough to pick up the robot, uh, and we didn't have the space to put larger gear reductions into it. So what we figured out is that if we extend the climber up and then pivot the rack forward as we climb, we can only lift part of the robot, and then we can pivot the rack back up and lift the other half of the robot, lifting the robot in a two-stage climbing sequence. We can demonstrate that now. All right, so the driver pushes one button and holds it to prep the climb, and then when they release that, uh, the shooter is obviously going to run that climbing sequence, pivoting the rack forward and then coming back up. Awesome, that seems like it wraps it up mechanically. So let's get over here to your driver station, if you wouldn't mind, and look at all the different fancy uh, controllers and buttons you guys use. And then after that, we can get into the simulation a little bit. So um, our controllers here, uh, we've chosen them in a way driver specific. Our controls operator really likes this um, heavy machinery uh, sim controller from Logitech. We have a ton of programmable buttons and all sorts of modes that we can use for different functions between programming and driving. And then over to the sticks, um, we had a recommendation from our mentor for this stick, which is cover and buttons, which allows our base driver to really just control more parts of the robot when they need to and not have verbal communication slow down flow. Awesome. And then Quinn, do you want to talk us through the simulation you were showing me? Yeah, so this year uh, we started using Advantage Kit and Advantage Scope for simulating the robot. Uh, and it's been really helpful uh, in accurately replaying what's been happening in a match. So right now we have it displaying the robot's uh, estimated position, uh, plus uh, where the limelight is localizing the robot to be at, uh, so that we can figure out that all of that is working during a match. So for our shooting code, we localized the robot on the field, obviously using a mixture of, a mixture of odometry and that limelight. Uh, and then we're going to create a translation 2D uh, relative from the robot to the target. And then we're going to get the angle of that translation and then invert it so the robot faces down that translation and the shooter faces directly towards the target. Uh, with that, we can then fire at the target. And we are also using a bit of velocity compensation in that. So we're taking the robot and then we project about 1.5 seconds in the future where the rope where we expect, or 0.15 seconds into the future where we expect the robot to be. Uh, so we take a shot more accurate to the one that will really be taken when the, when the driver pulls the trigger. Awesome, well, beautiful robot, beautiful software work that you guys have been doing. Thank you, Tractor Technicians, very much for having me today. This is Carter with First Updates Now, signing off. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.